so this is day two on the Trans-Siberian. Um, thank God Julius helped us get all this stuff on board. We have so much shit. We literally had to stuff like three suitcases up on top and then we have uh, an extra seat just for luggage. So we're completely maxed out, but we managed to get all 11 pieces of luggage onto the train and uh, we're good and happy. We've been living off piroshki and uh, noodle soups and just uh, and ice cream as well, just hanging out with people. Yeah, loads of gummy bears as well and stuff. So it's, it's been really fun and we're just sitting here watching the, the landscape pass us by slowly. Um, and yeah, it's really, really cool. We met these two, two guys from Switzerland, a man and a woman that they're really, really crazy. They've been cycling all through Europe, all the way to Russia, and now they're gonna go all the way to New Zealand, overland, so pretty intense stuff. Gazing out of the window of the Trans-Siberian Railway is like looking into a different dimension. The landscape passes us by, trees, plains of flat green nothingness. Normal laws of physics don't apply anymore in the train. Everything's monotonous and time slows down. Exhaustion sets in, and at some point all conversations end in nothingness. Every book has been read, and you can only sleep so much. The world outside of the train ceases to exist. You can see it, but it's not there anymore. And we live from stop to stop. We've already done, I think, about 1,500, 1,800 kilometers right now, maybe, I don't know. Train just keeps going and you just sleep so well, it just keeps chugging. And uh, it's quite strange, this time we actually haven't really talked to other people, it's just, uh, even though it's it's really cramped, people don't really seem to communicate with, another, with, the, with each other, so everybody seems to kind of keep to themselves. Every few hours, the train stops at bigger train stations. Everyone jumps out to stretch their legs or to buy a few odd things on the platform. It's the first time I've really been to Russia as an adult, basically. And the thing that strikes me at every train stop, basically, there's some local that sells some food, and it's fantastic. The ones we've, we've tried till now, it's just great. One of the central congregation points is the samovar. You can find one in every Russian carriage. It is in essence a huge boiling teapot full of hot water. Every passenger can get a cup from the conductor. They also sell tea and snacks. Because of the hot water, instant noodles are also a local favorite on the train. It's 52 people in one carriage. Really a microcosmos. Only these people inside of this train exist at this moment in time. Nothing else. 5,000 kilometers, three and a half days. It feels like nothing before or after this moment ever existed. Except for the smell. The smell is pretty real and it increases with every kilometer. Also, entweder es riecht nach Scheiße, es riecht nach Pisse oder es riecht nach Rauch. Jetzt gerade riecht es nach Rauch. Also, es ist ein, ein, Facet, ein facettenreiches Riechen hier. Inside of the train you feel safe, the conductors keep an eye out for you and look out for troublemakers. It's outside of the train that you need to be careful. So, day three, three and a half actually, of our trip. We're almost there now, and everybody feels pretty shit. We had a really, really hot day in the train, and uh, it was just really, really, really warm. And now the sun's setting in Irkutsk, and we have to see how we get all our stuff out of the train and bring it to the hostel where we're gonna live for the next four months. So, yeah, that's about it. Irkutsk, finally, different place, same story. We say farewell to Patrick and Cornelia, carry all our stuff out of the train station and take a taxi to what will be our home for the next four months. Tired and excited, we wonder what lies ahead of us. <laughs>